All right, guys, we got a really cool build for you today inside of this funky looking case using some really neat components. Let's dive right into it. Need a Windows or Office key but don't want to pay retail? MMORC.com has all the best deals and a sweet discount for BPS Customs viewers. Just head over to the site link below and enter code BAN35 for 35% off your order total, meaning you could snag Windows 10 Home for under 10 bucks. Fill out your email and place your order and then click the extract code button at the top of the page. From there, it's as easy as heading to your Windows activation settings and inputting your shiny new key. For more information, head to MMORC.com or check out the links below. If you are new here to the channel, thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this most recent PC build, but we kind of do these things all the time here. So if you want to see more of it, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below for more PC reviews, how to's, builds, and other tech related things. Today's project is going to be based around the Game KM case from Ice PC. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with this case, there's probably a pretty good reason for it. I got introduced to this case through Banggood. Now Banggood is kind of the Amazon of China along with AliExpress and one of the representatives asked me if I'd be interested in taking a look at this case and I said sure it's definitely interesting looking. It looks kind of like a base tube if you guys are familiar with car audio and I'm kind of a sucker for any PC case that kind of goes outside of the norm. So what we have here is a micro ATX chassis that supports up to 240 millimeter radiators and has a really interesting airflow design with a 200 millimeter fan at the front that blows air through and then exits at the top and at the rear. I don't really know how this build is gonna go if I'm gonna enjoy building in this case, but it looks pretty cool. And if you guys are interested in one, there's a link down below. Even though Banggood is a Chinese company, this case took like two days to get to me. I think they have a warehouse in the United States that has them. So there's gonna be a link down below along with a discount code. So if this is something that really tickles you, feel free to check out that link. But maybe hold off on that until we finish the build and I let you know what exactly I think of how this went. Now we are gonna be doing an Intel build here using the 10700K. This chip is actually kind of a recent favorite of mine considering that there have been significant price drops on Intel 10th generation parts. And as a result, they've kind of turned into the budget friendly gaming platform, as odd as that sounds. We're gonna be pairing our 10700K with the Z490T Silver motherboard from Biostar. You don't often see a lot of Biostar products here on the channel, but they did send this over to me a few months ago now, and I'm glad that we finally found a way to use it. Now, although this case can take micro ATX boards, putting a mini ITX board in here is not gonna look all that weird, and it's going to leave a lot more room to be able to use a full-size graphics card, an AIO cooler, and anything else that we might wanna put in there. Now, speaking of that graphics card, this is the Radeon RX 6700 XT. This is obviously the reference design cooler. We did take a look at the power color Red Devil version of this same card a few weeks ago here on the channel. And I'll leave a link to that review right up there in case you guys wanna go check that out. But just to recap, AMD really did bring it with this generation of Navi GPUs. And this thing is no slouch at 1080p and 1440p and should provide us plenty of gaming horsepower. Cooling the 10700K is going to be Enermax's Lickmax 3 ARGB cooler. This is a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. It uses their addressable RGB fans, has some addressable RGB features around the block top, and I think should really pair well with the 10700K, give us adequate cooling without you know, having an overly large radiator. Powering our build is a new power supply from Fractal Design. This is their Ion Gold. And while 850 watts is probably overkill for what we're doing here today, it is going to provide us plenty of room for upgrades in the future. And if you happen to maybe throw a 10900K in here and upgrade the GPU to say a 6900 XT or something, you'll still have the wattage to be able to power your system and play your games. Now, the last component that we're going to talk about is quite sexy. These memory sticks are from Thermaltake. They're their tough RAM 
XGRGB. Now, Thermaltake has only recently gotten into the memory space. I remember seeing their first tough RAM at CES a few years ago, but their design has certainly come a long way. These are less chunky and more aesthetically pleasing than a lot of the memory that we find on the market today, and certainly more so than their previous efforts. I really like the design choices that they made here, and I think they look really good. And I hope they look just as good with all the lights on, and that's what we're gonna find out as we put this system together, show you guys that time lapse, and then test everything out at the end. Let's go. Feels good to get back to what this channel was built on and that is building reasonably priced high performing PCs and showing you guys how it's done. I'm really glad we were able to get that time lapse in. I know we've done some builds in the past few weeks where you know we put some water cooling equipment in a kind of a crazy case but that's not really something that applies to a lot of people whereas this is something that could potentially be replicated by a lot of people out there and I am really happy with these results. I have some thoughts on this case that we will talk about right now. But overall, I think things went really well. I ran a bunch of gaming tests and the performance of this system is absolutely excellent, especially at 1440p and ultra settings, which is what all these games were tested on. I ran things like Red Dead Redemption 2, Far Cry 5, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Metro Exodus. Red Dead and Metro Exodus were running in the mid 70s. Uh, Far Cry 5 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, over 100 frames per second. That leaves a lot of headroom for turning on additional eye candy or even maybe trying some 4K gameplay if you turn down some settings. And having a kind of a mid-range system based on a processor from previous generation that has come down in price significantly means that the core components here, obvious GPU availability issues aside, are very reasonable and very accessible for a lot of people. The 10700K is maybe my recommendation right now for a gaming only processor. Granted, it's still very powerful and can do a lot as far as productivity tasks and whatnot, but if you're just looking for gaming, then I don't know if there's really anything better right now. It definitely cranks out some high frame rates and does it with a reasonable amount of power and heat. 
Now, as far as that heat goes, the GPU was running in the mid 70s and maxed out around 76, 77 Celsius after a sustained gaming load. And the CPU under those same gaming circumstances with the GPU really creating a lot of heat load inside of this case was getting up to about 57 Celsius. So those aren't the lowest temperatures I've ever seen, but they're really good. And they're nothing that I would complain about, especially because we're not putting the beefiest cooling solution in here. This is just a single 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. Now let's talk about this case a little bit and some things that I liked and some things that I didn't like. Uh, one thing that I liked is that it is very spacious inside. A lot of small form factor cases really make you make compromises when it comes to where you have to route your wires, where you have to mount your components and kind of, you know, getting your hands in and screwing things in can be a pain sometimes. And that was not the case here. There's a lot of room inside and a lot of easy ways to route cables and place components. Also for a fairly inexpensive case, the connectivity is decent. Uh, there are three USB ports on the front IO along with separate headphone and mic jacks. The front fan behind this single piece of tempered glass here is controllable. Unfortunately, you do have to hook it up via Molex, but it is controllable uh, via uh, RGB control buttons on the side of the case. So you can cycle through a couple of different presets. Also, the case is entirely unique looking. We've seen horizontally mounted motherboard situations before. Thermaltake does it quite often. But this, I don't think I've ever seen before with the cylindrical construction, the decent chunky feet down below, and the multiple panels that you can easily remove to gain access to your internal components. I think there is a lot of good here, but there is also some bad. Now, this top piece is acrylic. That is expected. To get a giant curved piece of glass like this would take a lot of work and a huge amount of expense. So I did not really expect it to be glass. That being said, having handled a lot of tempered glass recently and having most cases come with tempered glass panels, taking off an acrylic piece and realizing how flimsy and cheap feeling and easy to scratch it is, is a little disappointing. But that's okay, you're not paying a whole lot for this case anyway. Also, I had to drill my own cable management holes at the back of the case, and I did this so that I could thread some zip ties through and make sure that the cables coming off of the fans at the top of the case weren't just dangling wires down in front of the motherboard and memory. That was easy enough to do. It took me all of about a minute, and now I have a situation where the internal cable management is much better. Also, if you're gonna go and purchase this case, I would definitely recommend putting an exhaust fan in. I could feel the air kind of stagnant back here while all of it is directed up above the case. It's kind of flowing in here and directly out. So we don't really have a whole lot of airflow down and across our components. So I would think a, a rear exhaust fan would actually help quite a bit, encourage the proper airflow through this case and maybe help cooling the VRMs. But I didn't have any issues with VRM overhe overheating. Uh, and I don't think you would either. I just think that it might equalize things a little bit better if there was another fan at the back of the case. So what did you guys think of our base tube looking PC system? I like this a surprising amount. It's not my favorite PC that we've ever built here, but I'm kind of a sucker for these unique enclosures and these really cool surprising systems. Again, if you are interested in this case, you could buy it from Banggood. There's a link down below with a discount code. And all the other components are also gonna be linked down below in case you're interested in them as well. And I hope you guys enjoyed this build video. It was a lot of fun to do. And I think we built a really cool little system here. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. So thank you so much for watching. Get subscribed if you are not already. Hit that like button. Follow me on Twitter at BPS underscore customs. And I will see you next time.